This is from uh, Thomas Elmer. Tom Elmer. Tom Elmer, you better get it. Fight. So why I'm excited about Westport because well, I order Westport. Somebody a lot. was excited. Yeah, I might have liked this one a little. Really? Yeah, I didn't open this one beforehand. It was shared by a whole bunch of other people, and then I snagged it and stashed it in the vault so that we could actually because have it had been reviewed. to review it. Well, it was part of their gift Ooh. to the group and everything. Ooh. So I this is an Oregon malt. I would have meant this. We're in like a voluptuous single malt space side right now. Oh yeah. Yeah. See, here's the thing between them and Westland, yeah. Westward and Westland, I think the Pacific Northwest is kicking butt on malts. Okay. Right now, uh, this is just American single malt. They're doing new oak yeah. on the first round of this one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, voluptuous single malt space. If yeah, you it, like that, you will love this. There is a on the nose. On the the nose. musty malt note is right there, just like some of those slightly musty yeah, like Glen but it's being and, carried by this really beautiful, fresh, um, sweet fruit. Yeah, but the fruit is almost overripe. Like like uh like you, like, you know when nah, you uh, you say overripe, I say perfectly ripe. No, okay, so the it's the point where when you have fruit in a fruit bowl and you walk by, you can smell it. But and you know that it's like, if you wait two more days, this fruit's dead. Perfectly right. Right, so yeah, but I mean, there's that point when you can right. walk by and the smell of fruit starts to fill the room. That's what we're talking right there. Yeah. It's, over there's ripe, density to over it. Overripe, you can still eat it, but it's just gonna be a little bit heavier. So maybe just ripe instead of fresh. So instead of fresh fruit, ripe fruit. But it's all in the like peach and apricot direction. Oh, definitely. It's not in the dark fruit. Yeah, we're not in dark, and then we're not even in citrus really. It's peach and apricot for sure. And now I'm getting sort of a bready note out of this. Oh, oh, oh! No, this is yeah. really beautiful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, we were they actually going for a space side mm. kind of vibe? They were going for classic. Oh, taste it. There's that. There's that chocolate coffee note. A celebration of the American pioneer spirit. Well, more like Scottish space side spirit, but okay. Oh, oh, and then Made it from scratch from the Pacific Northwest, two row barley, right. fermented with ale yeast for outstanding flavor, double pot distilled. Yeah, pot still. For exceptional character and matured in new American. Oh, this is new American oak barrels. Yeah, I got this. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, starts with this on the taste. That little coffee chocolate note shows up, but it's milk chocolate, not dark chocolate. And then it has a little bit of a beery, oh, there's the beer like hoppy note in there. Well, it's not I, hops is the wrong word. It's not beery. It's, it's not beery. You're throwing yeah. me on the hops willy nilly. It's not the hops willy nilly. It's um, it's a thick, robust barley. Wow, like a barley heavy, thick beer where they oh, just really pulled like out that. every little scrap and essence. Of that barley character. Ah, no, so here's the cool thing, little small fact about these guys. Yeah. This is why I chose to do this one, even though they're a small guy, no, because wow. in 2018, Diageo invested in them. Oh, right on. In order to expand what they were doing at the time, not at the time, but the, in the early days, they started with a gin mm -hmm. and they made it fairly famous. Mm. Are you ready for this? Mm. The gin was called Aviation. You may have oh, heard of it. Oh, with the Ryan Reynolds. Well, they built it up so big yeah. that it sold to another company, and then that company, Ryan Reynolds, bought ownership stake in. Oh, no kidding. So they're still making that gin at their oh, distillery. Oh, right on. But it's technically that brand is owned and you know, be yeah. sourcing for that brand. Yeah, yeah. So it's the Ryan Reynolds Aviation Gin is being made by these guys. Right on. When they expanded into whiskey, yeah. they immediately did something this good. Yeah. And then Diageo invested in that and scaled up. Now they've got three, 4,000 barrels as of the last time I looked, um, maybe more now. You know what this is, the barleyness out of this is reminding me of when we were at Teeling and he was pouring out some stuff that he was working on. Yeah, right? I totally agree. Yeah, and he has like a beer background mm -hmm. and not kind of shying away from that oh, really rich does. beer barley character coming out of that. All right, so what'd you pull? This is the Teeling single malt. Mm -hmm. To confirm our suspicions. Well, and I'm specifically I'm looking for that barley rich note on Holy the crap. taste. On the taste. Oh, it's more Irish. Well, yeah, it's on Irish. Taste. Yeah, yeah. It's but I'm Irish saying whiskey. like it's even with even if they're using the same grains mm. and they're using malt and it's pot stilled, this definitely takes the Irish direction. Man, I think this 
went in a, gosh, just, this Westward is a really interesting mix of um, American with Scottish Speyside, mm -hmm. right? And then it's like if the Irish took that same kind of idea and they did their thing to it. These are all very much cousins. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So a little bit of water because science. And this one's ringing in, by the way, at 45. 90 proof. Mm. Ooh, sweetened it up a little bit. Actually hit a little bit of the barley character. Oh. I woke up some of the vanilla dessert. I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, well, I think you good. still got some comments over there. For I don't need you to remind me of the comments. Evidently you do. <laughs> Let's see if I can behind the back no look. No. Nope. No, you cannot. Father Fletch Face. <laughs> because, of course, Father Fletch Face. I wonder if he knows the farting carp. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a note you've got from a whiskey that you haven't experienced in any other? Something weird and unique? If so, what was it? And what was the whiskey? Yes. So good or bad was not qualified in this. No, 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 no. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say the old sap probably stands out yeah. as unique. <laughs> the whiskey pixies. Uh, remember he had an Italian. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, po poon poonie? <laughs> Punani. Punani? <laughs> That's Italian whiskey. It is Puni. P U N I. Do you remember the note we got out of that? Ah, uh, it was terrible. Do you remember the note though? I don't remember the note, I just remember hating it. Asparagus. Oh, you're right, it was asparagus. <laughs> yeah. Let's try it again. Maybe. Oh, yeah, it's spits. It's just totally asparagus. Maybe we came off of like, uh, all right. You're going to mix it with a single malt. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's still, that note is still going to stand out. Oh, it's the grilled. Oh, uh, it's grilled. It's char grilled. It's char grilled. Char -grilled. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you go to, uh, you go to the uh, Italian, uh, you go to the Italian restaurant. Right? Yeah, Trattoria Lucina. Yes, they have yes. They have the grilled vegetables next to the steak. And like some some bits are like black and that's it. That's it. You got oh the, God. Yeah. Uh, so you, yes, uh, the answer yes. Uh, Dahmer 0103. Is there any benefit or any purpose to the batch numbers on some whiskeys? Mm. Are some batch numbers more desirable than others? Do they denote a specific year of production, like a serial number, or are they just there for flair and or effect? In my experience when it comes to craft, yeah. batch is there to let you know this is the next round, and because smaller distilleries, when they're working to recreate their flavor profiles, have less barrels to work with, mm -hmm. I hate the <laughs> uh, they have less barrels to work with, it means that there can be variations hmm. on their releases. Like Jared has talked about this Balconis. Oh yeah. They even though they're trying to recreate Balconis single malt every time, like a vintage. There's a slight variation every time they do a new run because of the barrel count they're working with. It's yeah. not like Jameson where you're dumping, you know, hundreds of barrels at a time. Right. And so uh, it's like um, in wineries, they'll have basically the year, the right, season that release. It it make it makes a big difference. So the vintage of a Whiskey. Yeah, so whether or not they're prized. Less, less so than wine. But. Yeah, whether or not that you want, like, four was the best batch, or whatever, right. that just depends on the story. But essentially, batches just mean the next round of blending for our release. Now, does that also, do, do the batch numbers um, indicate parts of the warehouse where it was, so you can no. get the sweet spots? Because how do people determine what, do, do, because I know some whiskeys will, <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> I can hear the liquid sound. Of pulling that bottle out of the water, oh, the I'm whiskey on the table. Let's see if we can do it. <laughs> yeah, totally. A little section. <laughs> uh, anyway, no, it doesn't. So, okay. yes, you may have pulled from all over the warehouse, right. but you're trying to recreate a flavor profile. Right. So, so, so that's it's, more of a single barrel release. Thing. Yeah. So yeah a single yeah. barrel, and then you're trying to figure out where in the warehouse, because there's like warehouse sweet spots. Yeah, but well, I mean, you get things like, you know, the Heaven's Hill releases or the, uh, you know, the series where. You know, or, or the ones like Booker's and Baker's where, you know, they're pulling from specific places to create that category and flavor profile. Yeah. Yeah. I, I left you the Punani. Did no. you go? I report the West. We word. can't waste the Punani. Yeah, we can. Wait. Do you have to court Let me punani? double check and make sure that, yet. Yeah, it's, it's going to smell like asparagus now. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the fight, stealing and drinking. If you fight me, and fight for a friend. Steal me, steal your lover's life. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us.
Yeah.